MediaTek is on a roll. After dominating the budget smartphone segment in 2020, it has now upped the ante in 5G support in 21. The company launched a Dimensity 1000 Plus, which is their first 5G chip in India. And just a few days after, we already have the more affordable Dimensity 800U that powers the new Realme X7. Now, the Dimensity 800U is not alone in the mid-range segment because Qualcomm has already started to build a mid-range 5G portfolio, starting with the Mi 10i that sports the Snapdragon 750G, and then there's the more premium Snapdragon 765G on the OnePlus Nord. Now, it's very difficult to make sense of Snapdragon's naming scheme, but if common sense has to prevail, we would say the Snapdragon 750G should come somewhere under the Snapdragon 768G. And where does the MediaTek 800U come in? That's what we're gonna find out. So here I present to you our second chipset comparison on the MSP English channel. The first one pitted the Samsung Exynos 2100 against the Snapdragon 888 and if you haven't watched it already, a card should pop up right about now. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We are starting a new, we have some insane videos planned out and we need all your support. Hi, I'm Shubhrajit, you're watching MSP English, let's get going. Let's start with CPU performance. The spec sheet makes it clear that the Dimensity 800U is right up there with the Snapdragon 750G and the Snapdragon 765G. It's made on a 7 nanometer process. And what does this tell us? The Dimensity 800U shouldn't be taken lightly at all. The CPU cores powering it are the same as the Snapdragon 765G, which have been proven to offer excellent performance. The Snapdragon 750G CPU cores are seemingly more powerful, but they are also underclocked as compared to the Dimensity 800U. Let's see what the benchmark results have to say. We tested the CPU performance using Antutu and Geekbench, and the Dimensity 800U beats both the Snapdragon 750G and the Snapdragon 765G on Antutu. Breaking down the scores, the Dimensity 800U scored higher in CPU and GPU tests. However, the results are reversed in the Geekbench CPU test. Here, the Snapdragon 750G scored higher in tests for both single-core and multi-core performance than both the Snapdragon 765G and the Dimensity 800U. I think this is the Cortex-A77 cores basking in glory. As for the graphics, the MediaTek Dimensity 800U features the Mali G75 MP3 GPU. It's a 3-core GPU that is up against the Adreno 619 on the 750G and the Adreno 620 on the 765G. We used tools from the GFX Bench test suite to get an idea of how these GPUs perform. The idea is to test the raw capabilities of the GPU without the display hindering the results. And the off-screen tests in GFX Bench are the perfect tools for this. The winner is actually pretty clear here. It's the Snapdragon 765G that manages to drive a higher frame rate, proving that Adreno 620 is still the most powerful GPU in this segment. But important to note here is the Dimensity 800U beating the Snapdragon 750G, because we're going to come back to this a little later. And now the part that makes this job feel more like a hobby for me. I'm going to test the gaming performance in all the three chipsets and to do that, I've installed GameBench on the Realme X7, Mi 10i and the OnePlus Nord, which will give us a pretty accurate idea of the gaming performance. We played Genshin Impact, the most graphically intensive game on Android, along with a round of Call of Duty Mobile and boy were we impressed. The good news is that all the three smartphones offer an experience good enough for amateur gaming. But the bad news is, despite the Dimensity 800U scoring higher on GPU tests, it only supports medium graphics and high FPS on COD. All the three smartphones while playing Genshin Impact supports lowest graphics by default, but we pushed it to the highest settings for our test and here's what we found. You get the best COD mobile experience on the Snapdragon 750G and the 765G. The Dimensity 800U matches the FPS, but the graphics is lower. Genshin Impact struggles to run on all three, but the Mi 10i runs it relatively smoother than the others. 
The next test is video rendering speed, another real world scenario. Here we're gonna take a 15 minute video, put it up on the KineMaster app, speed it down to 0.5x and export it. We measured the time using a stopwatch and the meat and I finished first at around 6 minutes 55 seconds, followed by the Realme X7 at around 8 minutes 53 seconds and the OnePlus Nord came last by taking around 9 minutes and 31 seconds to export the video. Now the last real world test we performed is also the most intensive. It's a 45 minute power through with an intensive load on the CPU to see if rising temperatures throttles the performance. Well, some level of throttling is of course expected, but the 45 minute long CPU load makes the Dimensity 800U look much much better than its Snapdragon rivals. It only throttled to 91% of its peak performance as opposed to 86% on the 750G while the 765G is even lower. As a result, the Dimensity 800U was also able to compute more instructions than the other two, making it the champion in our test for sustained performance. Now so far as the CPU, GPU and gaming performance is concerned, the MediaTek Dimensity 800U manages to give its peers some good competition. It's not the most powerful by any means as proven by the real world test, but it's not a weakling either. But there are a few aspects where the Dimensity 800U falls short and the Snapdragon chips take the cake for offering a better overall experience. It's small things like AI scene detection. I noticed the Realme X7 regularly misinterpreted a zoomed in frame of a building as a piece of text. The ISP which handles the image processing is best on the Snapdragon 765G followed by the Snapdragon 750G and then the Dimensity 800U. Yeah, 5G and fast performance aside, this one will struggle with the quality a Snapdragon powered camera will provide. More on that in a camera comparison on our Hindi channel. The Qualcomm chips also support millimeter wave 5G which the Dimensity 800U lacks and the smartphone also tends to run slightly hotter than the other two that we tested and that's definitely going to be a problem during the great Indian summer. With all things considered, the MediaTek Dimensity 800U feels like a great introduction to the mid-range segment. With 5G support and fast performance, the Dimensity 800U doesn't give you much of a chance to miss Snapdragon smartphones. Yes, there are a few nuances missing, but the fast performance did leave me generally impressed. Yes, I did have my initial reservations against MediaTek making a mid-range 5G chipset, but testing the 800U on this Realme X7 wiped away all my doubts and I can wholeheartedly recommend smartphones powered by this chipset. And that brings us to the end. I hope you liked this video. Is there anything that we missed? Is there anything more that we can test out to compare these chipsets? We're eager to know all of that in the comments. Until then, I'm Shubhrajit, you're watching MSP English. See you later.